This channel and video is sponsored by Ratchet Clothing. I'll put their link down below in the description to this video. I wake up every minute with a fever dream. I push a mind to a limit where it needs to be. I work like I got vision I don't need to see. I'm picking mind over matter, I believe in me. I need to find more hours in the day to breathe. Need to find more power in the way I be. And when my mind turns out with the painful scenes, I need to scream out that I can't stop me. I want to be the greatest like Rocky. You know I leave them all hate like a hobby. I'm out here making moves like a lobby. And if you ain't with me, it's a lot. Today, I'm going to be speaking about an incident that took place between my younger brother and some bouncers in a nightclub in the Tropicana Hotel in Atlantic City. I received a telephone call one day from my father explaining to me that my younger brother, Chris, had gotten into a fight and he was locked up. The news kind of took me by surprise because he wasn't a street kid. He actually graduated from college and the college he went to was Virginia Tech. In fact, when the shootings at Virginia Tech took place, he was away at college. The day that tragedy took place, I was two months away from being released from prison. I remember hearing about the incident and calling home to make sure that Chris was okay. And I was told that he was off campus at the frat house when the shootings took place. Not long after I was released, my other brother and I went down to Blacksburg, Virginia to go visit Chris. We actually stayed at the Sigma Phi Epsilon frat house, which was in desperate need of a cleaning. While I was there, I had all the fraternity pledges on cleaning detail, including the staircase, which was sticky from all the spilled alcohol. Anyway, back to the telephone call I received from my father. Supposedly, my brother and a group of his friends were at a nightclub in the Tropicana in Atlantic City. Obviously, he had too much to drink because at one point, he jumped up on the bar or the stage. The bouncers came over and told him to get down, but not long after, he jumped back up there. They came over again and told him to get down. They may have gotten a little aggressive with him, but he did ultimately get down. At some point, my brother left his friends and went to the bathroom. And he took no notice of the four or five bounces that were following him. Four or five of these bounces jumped my brother in there and a scuffle ensues. And supposedly, my brother wind up biting one of them. The bouncers called the cops on him. They pressed charges. And as a result, he's arrested. So you got four or five bouncers that could have easily went over to him and told him that he had to leave the club. Instead, follow him in the bathroom, try to go to work on him. One of them gets bitten and they decide to call the cops and press charges on him. Tough guys. So after hearing this entire story from my father, I was fuming. At the time of this incident, I was already inducted with the Lucchese family for about a year or so. I drove to Staten Island and I went to go see my captain, Big John, and I explained what took place with my brother and that I wanted to get revenge on these bounces. And to Big John's credit, he told me we would get a crew of guys together, we go drive down to the Tropicana, we lay in the parking lot where the bounces park their cars, and we go to work on all of that. But the events that unfolded after that could have gotten our whole crew indicted. Besides that initial call from my father, and by the way, as he was telling me, I was trying to rush him off the phone. I didn't want him to say too much. I wish he would have told me in person, but it couldn't be avoided at that point. What needed to take place after that initial call was to stay off the phones. Anyone in that life understands that, but civilians don't understand and they talk on the phone. And that's exactly what both my brothers did. Even though I did my best to cut them short, the damage was done. So I had to make a judgment call. Was my revenge worth the freedom of our crew? Even though I wanted to get revenge for what they did to my brother, the risk was too great. I got in my car and I drove again to go see Big John at the cigar lounge. When I got there, I explained to him that we had to leave the Tropicana thing alone. I told him that my brothers kept calling me and talking about the incident on the phone. He agreed with me. He said, Mo, we would all get pinched. If the agents were listening to my phone, and I don't know if they were, and they heard about the incident that took place, and then we go down there and put a couple of bounces in the hospital, we're done. It's a slam dunk indictment. But you should always assume in that life that they are. And they would have thrown my father and my brothers in the mix just for good measure. When you're in that life, it's like playing chess. Not only with the other members, but with the agents as well. So if you make the wrong move, somebody's going to checkmate. My brother did wind up going to court because he was a college student with no record. They gave him a slap on the wrist. He pled guilty to some ridiculous charge. I just want to quickly mention a comment that somebody left in the community post. And I'd like to thank everybody again for participating. The comment was in reference to Johnny Sideburns borrowing $5,000 from Jamie Delio. The person wrote, wasn't it kind of out of place since the guy was on the shelf? And it was a very good question, meaning why would Johnny Sideburns borrow $5,000 from a guy on the shelf? Johnny Sideburns or anybody else in that life is supposed to know better not to do business with a guy that they know to be on the shelf. And borrowing 5000 from a guy is definitely doing business with him. So it was a good question, and I just wanted to mention it. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like it. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Also, if you think this video may interest somebody that you know, hit the share button. There'll be a drop down menu that gives you the option on how you want to share it. And thank you. I also want to take the time to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. I hope you all enjoy it with your families. Till the next time. You can subscribe to the Sit Down News blog at sitdownnews.com. And I appreciate everyone who has subscribed. Thank you. Well, just another example in the mob you never knew about. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, you can do so down below. If you would like to subscribe to my other channel, Unlimited Substance Podcast, I'll add a link in the description to this video.